my virtual friends, my name is Catherine, also known as Miss Blue, and welcome back to Lynn! Sorry it took me a billion years to get back to this game, but things got on the way and yada yada yada. Excuses, excuses, excuses! Which we should not go into right now. Anyway, return to this, let's go. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, 20% stress, and we were just heading out to school, I believe. The wind tugs at the hem of my school skirt. I hold it down with one hand and use the other to support my, the straps of my beat up old messenger bag. I clicked out the game. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, never mind. Let's uh, just. There we go. Oh, it's not recording now. Whoopsie daisy. Alright, hold on a moment. Recording. Now. There we go. Okay. Better? My bag's falling apart. It doesn't close properly now, but I can't afford a new one. Okay, there we go. We're working fine now. Panic over. I have to bear with it. Just like I have to bear with Jazz's hand me down uniforms and these old stuffed. scuffed trainers. At least they're not the shoes I wore to Aunt Shirley's first wedding. No, we will not talk about those shoes. I clicked with the to my tongue against the roof of my mouth. Why am I still thinking about that dream? It must have left an impression on me. That's rare. Well, it did, like, it did bring us up to like 10% stress already before we even woke up. I have bad dreams almost on a re daily basis, but the details start slipping away the moment I open my eyes. It's definitely unusual for me to still remember. Not just the gist, but the specific in ins and outs of my dreams while I wait on the platform number two at Strawberry Hill Station for my train. <gasps> Could do some full stops there. Never mind, anyway. There are a few other people waiting, glancing alternately between the watches and the electronic signboard. Rush hour in London is never pleasant. Oh boy, I can tell you that. No way. Even if I've only been there for a few days on holiday a while ago, it's not fun. The trains are always packed. Yeah, going on the underground was crazy as well. Like, they, they were serious when no one talked to one another. You could tell that we were foreigners, well, foreigners, uh, when we were talking to one another. was like, this is so cool! And everyone else was just so miserable because they've done it for like the 50,000th time. I hate going to school, especially with a bulky messenger bag to manipulate. Once I hit a small child in the face with my bag when I was scrambling onto the train. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> he cried and his mother started scolding me very, very loudly in front of all those smart businessmen. Ugh. What do you think you're doing, you clumsy girl? Her nose is, his nose is bleeding. You could have caused some serious damage. What do you have to say? Yeesh. By the end of this woman's tired, I was almost crying too. Jeez. I couldn't cry, of course, because I wasn't a little kid. And people don't think it's cute when teenagers cry. They think it's pathetic. Hmm. I was 13 back then. I'm even older now. I don't feel any wiser though. You never do really at that time age, do you? I feel like I've learned a lot more in like the past two years than I have in the entirety of going from 13 to 15, that's for sure. My GCSEs are coming up soon, then I'll be finished with school for good, unless you go to uni, in which case, another four years, or four to seven at least, even when I become a doctor. I don't need to ride on the cramped train at half seven in the morning ever again, unless I have to go to college like Jazz did, there you go. I don't think I'd go to the same college as Jazz though. She was studying health and beauty, that's a vocational subject. Hmm. I think Jazz is pretty good at health and beauty, especially at the beauty part. We see her practice every day. She knows all about getting your nails trimmed, how to curl people's hair, but Dad wasn't very happy about it. He kept banging on saying she was wasting her life. Wasting her education. We've given you so many opportunities that you just fling them back at our faces. Why can't you be more like your sister? Oof. I don't know anyone who'd want to be like me. I don't want to be like me. But at the same time, I glance to the right. I half expect to see a glint of metal tap against my professional vision, complete with basins, but I don't. You mean glasses? No idea. Oh, instead I see a girl about my age, but not quite my age. Is she hundreds of years older? I know her. Oh, never mind then. Uh, I know her in the same form group. We've been in the same form group ever since I started at Grace Court School. She's a girl who looks a lot like me with straight black hair and brown eyes. There's more to it than that. It's the arrangement of the features on her face, and the shape of them, too. Her eyes, her nose, her ears, her lips. Too similar. She looks so much like me, it's a little creepy. Hmm. She looks so much like it that Mrs. Madley, our form teacher, did a double take when she saw us in our oversized grey court uniforms on our first day in year seven. She asked us in this very exaggerated tone if we were twins. Like being twins is something special. I don't know, they're kind of half rare, I suppose. We're not, of course. We're not related at all. Sure. Perhaps not. 
Well, we're probably related in some way if you go back far enough, but the blood ties between us are so weak that they'd be about 99.99999999% 9 water. It doesn't help that she has the same name as me. Wow, that's really coincidental. A si oh, a similar name. Never mind, at least. My name is Lynn. Oh, she's called Lynn. Isn't that the title of the game? Hmm. She's me, but a me who reached into the Scrabble box and pulled out an extra vowel. Her name would be worth more than mine if you tried to play it on the board. Well, so are many words that have more words in it. Or letters, even. Nah, never mind. Analogies, analogies. Like she's so much better than I am. And in a way, I guess she is. Her school bag is nice and shiny, so are her shoes. Her uniform is all, are always ironed and her tights have never any holes. Well, she's better a woman than the rest of us, I suppose, because every single pair of tights I ever owned had at least one small hole in it somewhere. Usually around the toes or the knees, because I'm a clumsy fuck, that's for sure. She's like me, but better. Lynn with an E. She'll probably do better in GCSEs than I will too. That's a given. Lynn is really smart. I'm surprised our stress hasn't gone up after those two revelations. I look at her. With an angered glare, must I all note as well. I look at her for a little too long, as I often do, and she lifts her head. Uh oh, turn away, turn away! Her eyes meet mine. Shit, we made eye contact. Her gaze hurts. I feel like a needle is digging into the back of my skull. That's a, that's a statement. A short, sharp pain splits through the side of my head. I wince. I know this is going to sound petty, but... What? I really, really hate that girl. Heck, we've all hated people in the past. I don't see why it's so petty. Hello? Susie! Hey, Lynn, guess what Aki bought me? I don't know, what did Aki buy you? Well... Susie smiles smugly, her head resting on her hand, her elbow resting on the desk. Right? Her legs are crossed, but she keeps on crossing and recrossing them, and adjusting the hem of her skirt. It's too short, I bet you. Susie's kind of like that. She's one of those girls who's lucky enough to be considered kind of pretty, despite all her freckles. And she likes flaunting it. Her face is nice, I guess. But I think of her thighs as the I think her thighs are the prettiest part of her body. That's a that's a compliment, I guess. Her thighs are slender, milky and white, and she wears her school skirts a little too short so she can show them off, even in the winter. That's sensible enough. I'm kind of jealous. Susie's cute enough as it is. Even her name is cute, though her full name, Susanna, is a little stuffy. She doesn't need to make herself cuter. Being her friend is kind of bad for my self-esteem. She's had way more boyfriends than I have. It's not fair. Not that, not that it's hard to have more boyfriends than me. I haven't had any. That's not much competition, is it? Nope, comparatively. Like I could ever compete with Susie. He bought me a May uniform. A real May uniform. Oh. Oh, really? That's cool, I guess. I try to sound enthusiastic, it's hard work. Yeah, for some people, like, just going, I got a maid uniform, which is a sign of, you know, a kink, I suppose. Really hard to be super, like, yay, about it. I had to listen to Susie talking to me, talking at me, more like, about a dreamy Japanese boyfriend for the last month and a half. Oh, Aki. She met him online when she was doing a live stream. He contacted her and said he could compose music, and he knew a little bit about idol culture. And if she was really serious about being a performer, then he could be her manager. Whoa, okay. Now he's dating her. That's suspicious, but all right. She likes him, then sure. Well, dating in the loosest possible way, since her, he lives in Japan and we live in Richmond. Ah. That's pretty much as far away as you can get. It is cool, right? I'm going to wear it on one of my live streams. Neat. Yeah, I picked the outfit out myself. Huh? Okay, sure. It's kind of expensive, but I mean, Aki has money, so... So, indeed. Well, he's sending it all the way from Japan, and that and the uh, delivery costs alone would be fucking expensive as shit. Susie smiles and shrugs her shoulders coyly. Having a rich boyfriend must be nice. It must be nice having any boyfriend, full stop. Though I guess Aki's more of a man than boy, as he lives so far away and... and he, Lives so far away, he and Susie have no hopes of ever kissing and cuddling. Well, all the boys in our year group are stupid. The boys in our form are especially brain dead. Bradley Hurd tried to give himself a tattoo with his protractor and a blue biro pen in math. Wow, what a fucking tool, honestly. He managed to give himself a makeshift tattoo, a lopsided wonky one, but he also gave himself blood poisoning. 
Yep, that was a thing that happens. Sometimes, like people just, like whenever people would bite on their pens, like, oh, don't do that, it'll break and you'll get all over your mouth, which it happened like twice or so in my school. Craig Bentley's always making leecherous comments and trying to peer at girls' skirts when they walk upstairs. Oh, what a tube. I don't like them, I don't like them at all. In fact, I hate them. Good for you, they deserve to be. Girls my age are meant to be interested in relationships, I think. That's what all teen books and movies say. I'm not, though. Maybe there's something wrong with me. That's what Jazz says. She had a lot of boyfriends when she was my age, too. But I don't think she ever really liked them. Sometimes I try to imagine it. But letting a boy like Bradley or Craig touch me with their dirty, smudgy fingers makes me feel sick. I don't even know what's making me feel sick. If I had a boyfriend, I think I'd rather have a boyfriend like Aki, who lives far away. I never have to worry about him peering at my skirt or trying to grope me. Well, if she do, if what Aki's doing on her live streams is about, is what's going on in my head, then that's probably what they're trying to do anyway. Not like anybody would want to. Aki's so generous. The little registered trademark N up there. What's going on there? Susie's still stuck in La La Land. She's mooning over her boyfriend like she's the second coming of Christ. Ah, got a lot when people do that, or at least in things in general. You remember when Mother came out? That movie. They, the trailers on that were like the second coming of Christ, like where were you when you saw Mother and shit like that and I'm like I have not seen it at all so I don't know how good it is but I can't imagine it's like second coming of Christ level of, of bloated need to see type things I can ask him to buy me anything you know, literally anything, he just jumps at the chance, it's like some huge honour Hmm, Asian guys are always eager to please, Ugh. what's that end there for? I think it sounds weird also, that's slightly racist, but whatever. Oh, Lynn. Susie tuts. She looks sympathetic. You'll understand when you start dating. Sure I will. Stupid boys like Bradley and Craig are rude and mean to girls and make gross comments, but real men know how to treat their girlfriends right. Real men who live in Japan. Why is that? Because they know they're lucky to have us. I mean, look at it this way. I'm a cute young girl, I'm in the prime of my youth, he, meanwhile, is in his 30s. Ugh. Well, he says he's in his 20s, but I don't believe it. I've seen the photos. He's old, and he's not really super attractive. I think he's cute, but there are way better guys out there. Why should we be interested in him? Because you like each other? Mutual respect and love for one another? Appreciation at the least? I guess, but that's not it. Isn't it? Of course not, don't be daft. Okay, it's about a give and take. He wants a cute young girlfriend and I want somebody to spoil me and buy me nice things. Everybody wins. Yeah, that's how it works. What do your parents think about Aki? They don't know, do they? Well, they don't know, it doesn't have to hurt them. Thought so. Aren't they suspicious about all the packages he keeps sending you? Marked from Japan. Don't worry too much, Lynn. Plus one stress, great. Though technically, after all the stuff we've just been thinking about, I'm glad it's gone up just 1% at this point. Susie looks at me pityingly. She always looks at me like that. Like I'm slow in the head. So what if she's had a couple of boyfriends? Doesn't make her more mature than I am. But judging by the way she talks, you'd think she was far older. A little too far older. You think you should live a little. That's why you never have a boyfriend yourself. I don't think I want one. You will. Give it time. Oh, thanks, Susie. It's like a foregone conclusion. Susie starts peering at her fingernails. When is class gonna start? I'd rather do maths at this point than talk to Susie. She turns them this way and that, examining them beneath the lights of the classroom. Her fingernails are perfect, just like the rest of her. They're manicured, painted with nude gloss. She never, ever bites them. They would taste disgusting if you did that with actual nail polish on. I haven't put nail polish on in years now, actually. I haven't bothered to. I don't bite my nails either, but it just feels weird when it's on. It's like there's a sheen. Whenever you eat stuff, you always taste it, even though you're, I don't think you're supposed to, but whatever. Who has time to worry about their appearance that much? Susie does. And so does Jazz, apparently, as well. Susie's been doing her live streams from her bedroom for a couple of years now, in her attempts to become a Japanese idol. What does she do on these live streams exactly? An English angel with white skin and blue eyes. It seems to be working out for her. I think she's actually pretty popular. Not that I watch your streams. I don't think women should at this point. I think it's kind be kind of voyeuristic, I think. And anyway, who wants to watch their best friend since kindergarten wear cat ears and a kimono? Yeah, that kind of live stream thought so. 
He won't be on Twitch, that's for sure then. I guess she has a new costume in her repertoire now. Courtesy of her boyfriend slash manager. Good for Susie. At least she's happy. That's one way to look at it. She looks happy anyway. Isn't that basically the same thing? Uh, <laughs> hate to tell you this, Lynn, but no. Dad and Jazz are arguing again. Oh boy. I don't think it's Jazz's fault. She probably didn't want to argue, least of all with Dad. Jazz used to bully me a lot when we were little. I don't think she's a nasty person. Not really. Even if she is, she certainly wouldn't try to pick a fight with our dad. Dad's a lot bigger than both of us, and he's scary too. He'd be scary even if he didn't have such a quick temper. Dad's shoulders are broad and his hands are very large. They're scarred from years of manual labor. He works in construction, has done ever since I can remember. It's kind of good Dad works in construction. Usually he's too tired and dusty to do anything other than sigh and grunt and lie on the sofa watching the TV when he comes home from work. But that's just most of the time. Not all the time. Sometimes he comes home in really foul moods. His hands cracked and muddy, the palms bleeding and he starts shouting. He never starts shouting right away though. He's always quiet at first, like a volcano before it erupts. Oh, that makes it even scarier. Dad isn't a bad person, he just doesn't mean to lose his temper. I don't think he wants to shout at mum, or insult Jazz, or make me cry. He does because he's stuck in an exhausting job he doesn't like, but he never went to college so he can't get anything better. According to dad, the job market's in a shittier, in the shitter right now, his words, not mine, and there's no way he can ever hope of getting anything halfway decent. Neither can the rest of us at this point. That's why he keeps telling me I should study. I have to do well. I have to succeed. I have to make him proud. I think what he really means is don't end up like me. That's why he got so angry at Jazz when she broke the news about her pregnancy. Maybe he thought it was some kind of failure on his part. Or maybe he thought he'd done everything he could for us and Jazz was throwing his efforts back in his face. His words as well. He's arguing with Jazz on a mostly daily basis since then. Jazz isn't meek like me. She doesn't get scared easily, so she always argues back. Dad started to have a go at Jazz as soon as he got home today and then she tried to defend herself and things got worse from there. Oh, don't tell me if that happened. Mum asked Dad to stop, but he just shoved her away. Stay out of this mar marigold. It has nothing to do with you. Mum tried to stay to say it did have something to do with her because Jazz is her daughter. But then Dad gave her this look, and Mum hid herself away in the kitchen. Okay, good. Da Dad and Jazz are still arguing. Okay, good. And nothing bad happened. I thought the the, ba the worst possible thing could have happened. I can hear them downstairs. The voices echoing through the house. So you just sat at home and did nothing again. You're wasting your life. What would you expect me to do? I'm six months pregnant. I don't want to risk hurting the baby. The baby? The baby. It's always the fucking baby. You should have thought about them before you gave yourself to the first man that asked. Oof. I already told you it was a party. I was drunk. And that makes it all the better, doesn't it? I wasn't saying that. I just... I don't want to hear it. I didn't raise my only daughter to be a slut. Oof. I wish the walls in the house weren't so thin. I can hear them yelling even though I'm in the upstairs bathroom. I think the neighbours can hear too. We've had noise complaints more than once. The arguing got so bad at one point that Jazz moved out to live with one of her friends for three weeks. Mum cried and thought she'd never come back, but she did. Dad cried too. He hugged Jazz and called her his baby girl and said he was sorry. He was so, so sorry. He said he'd never shout at her like that again. He was wrong. I stare at the ceiling, the beige paint is peeling and the mould is sprouting in the corners. The water now lukewarm pools around my body. The tap is faulty and it drips over and over again into the already overfull bathtub. It's not loud enough. Not loud enough to drown out the noise. There's always so much noise. I sink back into the tub, submerging myself completely. I want to hide from it all, everything. Yeesh. Whoa, whoa, we're under the water now. Don't don't stay under there too long now, Lynn. We don't want to start doing things here. There are rolls of fat on my tummy and my legs need shaving. they are nicked here and there were small scars from my last attempt. I have PE tomorrow. It's my least favourite lesson. I can't stand it. I don't like getting changed in front of my classmates. I always worry compared to everyone else that my body looks all wrong. I close my eyes. The water flows about my head. It worms its way inside my ears. It's hard to hear Dad and Jazz like this. It sounded distorted, like it's happening on an alien planet millions of miles away. I think I'd prefer that. I'd like to live in space if it meant I could be alone. No Dad, no Mum, no Jazz, no Susie, 
No Lynn either. I wonder what Lynn's house is like. I bet it isn't like this. Perhaps not. Well then, 8% up already. Joy of joys. And next we have number 86, Miss Harper. Will you please step onto the stage? Yay! I want to obey the disembodied voice, but I can't. Oh no. Is this a dream? It feels like a dream. My legs are trembling like a baby deer. My heart is, my heart is pounding at my heart. I can hear them all. The crowd, they're, they're cheering. It's so loud it hurts. They're getting more and more excited. The previous act is ushered off the stage. <coughs> Excuse it. The red X that marks the spot is free. Waiting. Oh no, it's gonna go up like 30%. I can feel it from here. I feel sick. Why did I sign up for this? I don't think I did sign up for it. Must have been Susie. We saw an advert on the TV a while back and Susie said it was a great opportunity. Oh. You wouldn't want to miss out on a shot of stardom, would you? She asked. I would very much so. I don't like performing in front of other people. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not pretty like Susie. I'm not self-confident. I'm not anything really. Why am I here? I want to turn around and leave. But I already know I've come too far. I can't go back now. I have a feeling I know, considering what evidence we just had, of how this is going to end. And I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see for now. The roar of the crowd is almost deafening. Miss Harper, will you please step onto the stage? The disembodied voice calls me again, crackly and distorted. It sounds impatient. The crowd are getting impatient too. So is Susie. She's standing behind me. Why did she get here? It pushes me between my shoulder blades. Her eyes narrowed. Oh boy. Come on, Lynn. We worked so hard for this. You can't back out now. I don't know. I'm nervous. You can't be nervous. Not after we worked on your choreo choreography. And you're such a cute outfit too. It'd be a shame not to flaunt it. Cute? I'm not so sure. Oh, you were so close, Susie. You almost gave her a compliment. This outfit probably looked, looked cute on Susie. But it doesn't look cute on me. My skirt is too short. Several inches above my knees. Yeah. If I move around too much, I'll be in serious danger exposing my underwear to the entire nation. What was I thinking? I never think. The longer I stand here in the wigs, the paralyzed I feel, the harder and harder it gets for me to think, until I start to unthink. Everything I might have thought is slipping out of my skull, like somebody drilled a hole in my head. S Susie, please, I can't. You have to. Aki composed the song especially for you. Oh, good for Aki! He does good things to us all. I glance over Susie's shoulder. What? Aki's here? Because of course he is. He's always here. He came to see me because he composed a song for me and now I have to dance to it. Aki from Japan is here. Okay. He's in his 30s but he doesn't seem to look that old. Though when I squint I can see small lines beneath his eyes. His teeth are a little yellow too. There's blemishes across his skin. He smokes a lot of it and then... I can't imagine Susie dating somebody like this, but he is rich, so... And your mother made you your costume, you can't let her down. Why don't you start with the whole, uh, complimenting me and reassurance thing rather than going, for fuck's sake, Lynn, get out of there. That's right, I made it just for you, darling. Thanks, Mum, from somewhere. Where were you there? Don't look so surprised, dear, I want to come and cheer you on. This is so a dream, I bet you. That's right, you can do it, Lynn. Ah, it's all happening. Jazz is here, too. Why wouldn't Jazz be here? If Aki's here, who I'm sure I've never met before, it makes sense that Jazz would be here too. Yeah, she has quite a less distance to go than Aki does. I'm not sure about Dad, but maybe he's too ashamed at the thought of his favourite daughter making a fool of herself on national television that he couldn't bear to show up. I don't think I blame him. Miss Harper, if you are there, will you please come onto the stage? The audience are stamping their feet against the floor. I can hear them. They stamp over and over again. It echoes inside my skull. Oh, oh, two, plus two. Oh, dear. My heart pounds harder and harder. I hope this is a dream now, because a lot of stuff is happening. You can do it, Lynn. Don't back down. You're meant to be the smart one. I've always wanted at least one of my children to amount to something. Oh, Right in front of Jazz? Jesus, what about me? Bye. You worry too much, Lynn. You need to live a little. That's why you never had a boyfriend. This is a dream. We've, we've seen those lines before. I feel like I'm going to be sick. Maybe Susie's right. I do need to live a little. I can't give up before I've tried. I breathe in deeply and square my shoulders. My stomach's churning and I think I'm going to be sick. But I try to suppress it. The show must go on. The show will go on whether I want it or not. Apparently so. 
Show it, show time. Oh boy, three stress already. Wow. What a theater we have here. The lights on the stage are far too bright. The roar of the crowd is deafening. I feel like I've been tossed off the side of a ship. I'm drowning in sounds and sensations. There's so many colors I can see the white lights flickering behind my eyelids when I blink. The stage is the only thing that separates me from the crowd. They want, if they wanted, they could swarm forwards and pull me down at any time. Hurt me. Trample me. Break me. I shiver. Susie and Aki and Jazz and my mother are waiting for me in the wings. Just beyond the plush red curtains but I never felt so alone. My fingers tremble. My makeup is starting to run. I'm sweating foundation and eyeshadow mascara like some sort of clown. A circus freak. The crowd goes wild. So, Miss Harper, will you please introduce yourself? What brings you to searching for the stars? Oh god, are we gonna say something? Um... I need to lift my head, stop looking at my feet. I doubt I'm making a good impression. My grip about the microphone spasms. When did I have a microphone? Oh well, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm Lynn Harper, I'm 15 years old. I go to Grace Court Secondary School, and I'm not that good at anything. The audience laughs appreciatively. But my friend Susie made me sign up for this, and she put together a routine for me, so I'm going to sing and dance. Good, we're making progress, okay. All right, do your best. Yes, thank you. The music begins to play and it's song Aki composed for me. There's something wrong with it. It's muffled and distorted like it's playing from the bottom of the ocean. Oh boy. Thousands of beady, unblinking eyes train on me. They all want to see me fail. Maybe this is what I deserve. I watch Britain's Got Talent and The X Factor and living in the living room with jazz sometimes. Whenever they're on and we always snigger or bligging obligingly at the crap acts. The old woman with fal <clears throat> the old woman with false teeth who can't sing. The stunt artists who trip and fall over their own feet. The comedians who can't get a single smile yet alone laugh. It's just a public exercise in meanness, really. It's, way it's a way to mock and belittle those who dare to think they have talent. But I don't think that. I know I don't have any talent. I'm just Lynn. Plain Lynn. I don't have an extra E at the end of my name. And speaking of which, uh, is the other Lynn here as well? No way, why is the other Lynn here? There's a girl in the audience, I recognize her. She's sitting between two dark and shadowy figures without eyes or noses or ears or mouths. In contrast, this girl's features are very sharp. Her eyes are awfully familiar. So is her nose, her mouth, her ears, her hair. She looks just like me, but isn't me. She, can be a, she can't be me because I'm up here and she's down there. Lynn? Things are happening so fast, I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> the music continues. I stand there, feeling stupider and stupider with every passing second. I sweat makeup, animal fat rolls off my skin and gob... Gob... Gob it? Never heard that word before, but oh boy. The audience are getting restless, they start calling out to me. I can't hear what they're saying, I'm glad to. But I get the general gist. They stamp their shadowy feet. They point with their shadowy fingers. They shout with their shadowy mouths. Get her off the stage. She's not doing anything. What a waste. A waste. I really am a waste. I feel faint. I think I'm going to collapse and tilt. A strange scuttling sensation begins to creep. No, not just creep, caress my body. Ugh. The touch is almost intimate. But in such an incredibly wrong way, it makes the hair stand up in my, at the back of my neck. What's happening? Oh man, stress is going out real fast. There are feelers all over my body. Or maybe they're not feelers. I can see the background shifting as well. Could they instead be legs? Yes, legs, that's what they are. Hundreds upon hundreds of tiny insectile legs. They trail down the small of my back. They probe the dark crevice of my belly button. They squirm against the inside of my thighs. They're everywhere, all of them. Horrible, horrible monsters. My body is crawling with dozens upon dozens of millipedes. Where do they come from? I don't know. I don't know if I ever want to find out. The audience are laughing. The sound threatens to burst my eardrums. I have very narrow ear canals, Mum. Mum said it was a medical condition. It runs in the family. I can't deal with all of this. These disgusting, filthy, horrible creatures. I tried to bat them away, brush them off. A few millipedes fall from my thighs, they land upside down on the wooden stage, their legs squirming pathetically in the air. 
Hunters run hundreds of legs. I step on them, they burst. Leaking black insect fluid all over the wooden stage. This is a dream and a half, I tell you that much. The audience laughs harder, they're pounding their feet against the floor. The stage seems to shake. Why are they enjoying this so much? What did I do wrong? No matter how many millipedes I shake off my body, yet more spawn to replace them. They're endless. They continue to wriggle and writhe, covering every inch of my body. Between my toes, ugh. Against my armpits, even inside my mouth, oh. No thank you. Plus, yeah, the plus five was totally adamant. I choke, gag, thousands of tiny legs, even thinner than pet pipe cleaners, try to prise my lips open. I can feel them wriggling against my tongue. Ugh. I'm gonna throw up. I'm going to vomit millipedes all over the stage. Everybody's gonna see. They're going to laugh. Everybody. Except her. What, Lynn? Is she just sitting there? Oh, she's crying. She won't laugh. She'll just watch and stare. She won't do anything to help me. Why should she? I never tried to be nice to her. You hate her. <laughs> Why would she be nice to me? Oh boy. Ah. Uh, she's gonna scream now? I can't keep upright. I fall to my knees, squashing several wriggling millipedes beneath me. Oh, it's gone silent now. Oh boy. There are more and more of them. They're not just crawling against my skin over my brow, inside my bra. Instead, they're inside me. Inside my mouth. Beneath my eyes. No! Ah, it's a green away inside my veins. I'm joking. I'm drowning. I'm dying. And everybody laughs. Why do I feel like this is a big old metaphor for something? Hey, Lynn, you're finally woke up, and good god, do you look awful. Oh, hey, Vaughn. Morning, Sleeping Beauty. Did you have a good night? Oh, um, no, probably not. I blink. I think I might be staring. There's somebody in the kitchen. I didn't expect to see them sleepy Monday morning. This sleepy Monday morning. Jazz being awake is unusual, though. But there's more of the person sitting beside her that really makes me stare. It's a woman with dark skin and shockingly pink hair. Her face is comprised of 50% metal. She has enough piercings to set off the security system at any airport across the world. I can't even count the number of piercings she has. They're probably, almost definitely, more that I can't see. This woman is called Vaughn, short for Yvonne. She has Jazz, older. She's Jazz's older kind of creepy friend. Uh-huh. Vaughn hardly ever comes over. Dad doesn't like her. He thinks she's, a bad com she's bad company. I'm not sure if I agree or not. Vaughn is pretty cool, but she's also rather scary. I think I last saw Vaughn four months ago. She said she'd become a Wiccan. She asked me if I wanted her to read my palm. I don't really believe in palm reading, but Vaughn is very, very convincing. And I was a little afraid that if she saw my, saw the imminent end of my life in my hands it might come true. Hey, uh, hey there, Vaughn. I give her a shy little wave, Vaughn laughs. I don't know if I want to impress her or try to hide from her. The two conflicting emotions war inside my head. <clears throat> That's probably why I'm clinging to the side of the kitchen door like a lizard. Oh, right, I was gonna say, like, a lizard? What kind of lizard? But then you get those little geckos that, like, climb up trees. It's bad enough that I just got out of bed, but I'm still wearing my pajamas. My hair's all mussed up, too. What's new with you? Jazz is right, you don't look so hot. Oh, nothing really, just bad dreams, you know. The existential crisis and a few as well. Yeah, it must have been pretty awful. You look like a zombie. Thank you. Coming from a woman like Vaughn, I think that might be kind of some sort of compliment. Maybe? Is it because of exams? Are you have GCSEs in a few weeks? Oh boy, don't remind me. Could be. It's a little stressful. Yes, little being half. Gotta be hard being the smart one in the family. Oh, I'm not. Not really. You're smarter than me. Well, that's not exactly hard, is it? Oh, bitch. Hey, don't be, don't be a bitch. There we go. Jazz tries to give Vaughn a shove, but Vaughn avoids her easily. Being quite heavily pregnant with a round stomach like a cannonball, Jazz can't really counter. All she can do is tut. And why aren't you at school, little miss? It's gone nine. Oh, shit. Oh, it's study leave. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I remember that. You always get study leave around the last month of year 11, huh? Yeah. That takes me back. It's been a long, it's been so long I almost forgot. Takes me back as well. Oh, I don't miss that time that much. I am. Um, I meant to stay at home and study, I guess. That's why my pajamas. 
I don't need to get dressed yet. Don't get dressed at all to be comfortable in your pajamas for the rest of the day. At least I didn't think I did. If I'd known Vaughn was coming over, I might have cleaned myself up a bit. Why not stay up too late? You'll get panda eyes. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Despite being so scary looking, Vaughn's actually pretty nice. She did let Jazz crash on the sofa for a few weeks after that whole debacle with Dad. Then again, Jazz did get knocked up at a party Vaughn held at our house with all her weird goth friends. So maybe she's felt responsible. Whatever. I don't really understand Jazz's relationship with Vaughn or how they became friends in the first place. But it's not my place to pry. All I know is Jazz and Vaughn have been friends for almost six years. Vaughn's 27, I think. So we, so they must have met when Jazz was 13 and she was 21. It's a bit weird. When they've always been gotten on pretty well. I don't think they're dating, but Jazz likes to make jokes. I'm pretty sure they're nothing more than jokes, but with Jazz, it can be hard to tell. I glance at the bread bin. The plastic bag of Warburton's half and half is all but empty, with only two slices remaining. As I thought, they're the crust. The most horrid of ones. Thanks, Jazz. You're the best. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not hungry anyway. I sigh, closing the bread bin with a dull thud. Jazz blinks. Do you want to eat anything? No, I'm fine. You get sick if you don't eat. You're, re you're already so tiny. Thanks, Vaughn. I'll be alright. Geez, everyone's just full of compliments this morning, apparently. Memories of my dreams still linger in the corners of my mind. I'm afraid that if I put food over to my mouth, it'll suddenly transform to a squirming mass of spindly legs. Ugh. I still feel sick. Geez, I feel cold as well, just thinking about it. I need to get out of here. The kitchen is stifling. I'm actually gonna go see Susie. Oh, great, our best friend ever. You gonna go stay together? Something like that. All right, whatever. Jazz gives me a lazy wave. Her free hand resting against the balls of her belly. She always seems to have her one hand pressed against her belly nowadays. Maybe she's trying to communicate with the alien life forms growing slowly inside her. Or maybe she's trying to stop from bursting out. That's a scary thought. Even scarier than Vaughn. Have a good one, Lynn. Don't stay out too late. If Dad gets back and you're not here, he'll go ballistic. Don't I know it at this point? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yay, plus one. I know only too well. Right then. I think, therefore, we can leave it here for now. So, we will pick up Lynn in another episode where we will actually, hopefully, maybe finish it since we got halfway. Or maybe two more episodes. Who knows? For now, though, things are getting bad at this point. A lot of visual clues have been left behind to at least hint at how this may end. And it's not going to be a good one, but... We can't change so we've got to go along with the ride. Hopefully you'll join me in the next one. Thank you all so kindly for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. See you later.